Hi there, Mount Movers. This is Melissa Taft, and I am at a hospice center with my dear and precious sister in Christ and one of my dearest friends, Eddie. And today while I was visiting her in hospice, of course the report was that she is going to be passing soon and she is not coherent in the natural, but we also understand that in the spiritual realm we are very coherent because our spirits never die even though our bodies are shutting down. And the reason I wanted to do this video is because there's going to be a time in your life or you are in a situation like this when everything seems hopeless and you are not sure how to pray or what to do when you are sitting in a room with somebody and they are about to pass on from this life into another life. So I wanted to encourage you today because I told Eddie when I walked in here that we were going to give the devil a huge massive blow to his kingdom because the devil lies to us and tell us that, tells us that death is permanent when scripture says, oh death, where is your stink? And I told Eddie, you know what? This is how we're gonna go out. We're gonna go out with a bang, amen? We're gonna go out with this video which is gonna encourage us as believers to bring hope and peace and comfort into people like this that are on their way to heaven, amen? So when we come into a place, depending on where people are at, uh, we want to be cognizant and watchful of where they're at that we're ministering to. For many of us, people are gonna be in hospitals, maybe at home, or in a situation where they're, they're in a hospice center. And we have to remember in hospice centers, there's a lot of spiritual warfare, and there's huge demonic presences. You know, we know that. We have to remember there's death in these places, such as hospitals and hospice centers. There are principalities and powers that are operating uh, in death, or in hopelessness or despair. There are fear spirits everywhere, especially the more people that are in a place where you are ministering to, you can feel the thick presence of the spiritual warfare. And this is prevalent in places like this. So when you're coming into a place like this and you wanna pray effectively, and you wanna pray powerfully, you have to understand that you're coming into the battleground and it is the battleground that is ushering death and sickness and disease and so forth. So with that, when I come into hospice uh, like this, I start binding spirits. I'm binding fear and I'm binding spirits of death and just about everything else that you can call out. I'm binding spirits of sickness and infirmity. You know, especially for my dear friend, she has her own room, but there's a lot of fear that a person is going through and a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of mental anguish, you know, in the body, in the flesh, in the mind. You know, you have people coming in and out of the room and they're speaking. And even though our, our natural mind not be able to comprehend exactly what people are saying, our spiritual mind can. And this is where a lot of fear spirits come in because they come in and say the diagnosis is not good. Or they say, they bring up words like dead or death or things like that. And uh, it is imperative that you are strong in the spirit realm so you, that you can bind these spirits and come against these spirits. Because if not, when you walk into a situation like this, you will be grieved and you will fall under those spirits and you will start to fall into fear or worry or anxiety or depression or whatever else spirits that want to fall on you, which will render you useless as a warrior and an intercessor. So just remember that you have to prepare yourself ahead before you come into a situation like this. And one of the ways you can do it is by praying to the Lord, by having scripture ready to go, because you are coming in the war zone called the war zone of death and the war zone of destruction. So uh, that's number one, what you wanna do is get yourself prayed up before you come in so you're not taken out. So you wanna come in powerfully so that you're not taken out. Number two, you want to start binding the, the spirits like I told you, and you will fill these spirits. Ask the Holy Spirit to discern, to show you what spirits you are coming against besides the obvious ones that I, we've talked about, such as death and premature death and infirmity and fear and all of those other spirits. And this will depend where you're at. Um, another thing you want to do, number three, is that you want to play some worship music. I just played a beautiful song for my friend, and many of us have heard it. It's called 10,000 Reasons or Bless the Lord, O My Soul. And it speaks very specifically in there about when someone is ready to let go and when their strength is failing and the end draws near. 
So there are some words that are very powerful in that song that start crushing the power of death and, and the sting of death. So I played some worship music and she started to move around. Even though she's in a coma in her natural, spiritually she started to receive what those words in that worship were saying. So I come in and you want to bring joy into a room. You're coming into a death room. You want to bring the joy of the Lord who gives us strength. You bring in that joy. You impart that joy. You show that joy. You should have a peace that surpasses all understanding. When we understand that death is temporary, death shouldn't get to us. So there's a peace in our hearts that surpasses understanding. Now, hopefully your friend is saved, born again, and knows Jesus Christ and the redemptive power of Jesus Christ and not just God. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Jesus is who guarantees us eternal life. So we want to make sure that they are born again. And sometimes it's a thief on the cross situation where the Lord said, today you will be with me in paradise. So we, we don't come in worrying if they're saved or not. You start speaking to their spirit man and you ask the Holy Spirit to give them a revelation and a comprehension of in their spirit man, which is still alive because our spirit never perishes. So sometimes we're going to lose all hope because the devil's going to say they're not saved or they can't hear what you're saying. But your spirit man never sleeps. It doesn't have the same carnal ears that we do. Your spirit man doesn't fall into a coma. Amen? You have to realize these things or you lose hope when you come in. Now, fortunately for me, my friend was 100% born again because the Lord gave me that opportunity a few months before uh, she got to this point to lead her to Jesus Christ. Not to just God, but to Jesus Christ. Not to a religious God, but a redemptive, all-saving, all-knowing, all-loving, all-generous, and all-merciful God. That's the God of the Bible. That's the Jesus she needs to know because that will combat some of the things she's going to be going through. When people are in this state, they're going through a lot of fear, like I said, and anxiety. Their minds are being tormented. There's a lot going on. There's a spiritual realm that's wide open. There are people walking in. You don't know who's who and what's what. You don't know what spirit they're operating out of. So this is why it becomes imperative when you come in, you have to kind of clear the clutter. You have to clear the room. You have to clear the environment. So you come in rejoicing in the Lord. So you wanna come in praising and rejoicing in the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that death is only temporary. That is your saints, that we do not have to endure death, that death has no power over us, that, that Hades and hell and death have been uh, covered by the precious blood of Jesus. They have been destroyed by the precious blood of Jesus. So when you walk in, because the, the person can feel what you're feeling in their spirit man, they might not be able to see it on you, her eyes are closed, but they're gonna feel it in their spirit realm. So you have to remember that there's a lot of fear spirits. So you have to have your word ready. You never come into a situation like this without your word. So the th things that we're going to cover today real quickly in a situation like this is number one, fear. So we go straight to Psalm 73, 26. And I wrote a few of these down because you have to come and clear out fear and anxiety from every single person that is here. They're in the same situation of death. And there are different demonic spirits that come in. If there are unsaved people in this room or hospice center or hospital or wherever you're at, you are contending against spiritual wickedness and forces and they wanna come in and they wanna bleed in into your room, kind of like vapor, kind of like smoke. They wanna come in and contaminate a room like this. So you wanna come in and you wanna plead the blood of Jesus Christ. You wanna walk in your authority. You wanna walk in your power. You wanna come in with the joy of the Lord. That's what's gonna give you strength to endure and to come out of the situation. So now we read Psalms. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is my strength of my heart and my portion forever. So even though my flesh and heart, and I start praying these over her, Eddie, even though your flesh and heart may fail, God is your strength. He is the strength of your heart and your portion forever. Then we wanna read scriptures like this. This is a powerful one. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor demons, nor the present, nor the future, nor any power operating in the center, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is on our Lord Jesus Christ. This is saying that nothing, no death, no hell, no principality, no demon, no spirit of death, nothing, nothing can keep us from the love of God and from the promises of eternal life with Jesus Christ. Another scripture that I pulled up was John 14, 1 through 3. Do not let our hearts be troubled. 
So I'm saying that to her, but also to myself. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. If you trust in God, trust in me. There is more than enough room in my father's house. If this were not so, what I have told you, then I'm going to prepare a place for you. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me wherever I go. So I tell Eddie, Eddie, God has a place for you in heaven. He's ready to usher you in. You have your own place. You're going to be ushered in by the king. He's going to send his escort angels to come and get you. And you're going to be ushered in to an eternal kingdom where he's going to wipe away every tear. And there is no more death and there's no more sickness and there's no more fear. So I'm using the word, but I'm speaking that over her. And that's going to give her hope. So you have to combat fear first, the fear in yourself coming into a situation and the fear spirits that are lurking and looming around in a situation like this. So now we go to hope, which is the next thing, because she needs to know she has hope, especially as a brand new believer. She's brand new in the Lord. She doesn't understand her entire relationship with the Lord. So I want to speak hope and I want to declare hope over her situation. So this is from Romans 15, 13. It says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I read these scriptures, but I read them with love and power and authority because you're combating all these things. So I'm smiling and they will respond. As I'm praying this, her inner man is receiving its manna. It is bread. It is, it is what she needs. It is the nourishment of hope that is gonna keep her in that state of peace even when I leave today. Even when I leave, I'm giving her the bread of life. The word says that he who eats of this bread shall never go hungry again. And he who drinks of the living word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit shall never go thirsty. When I leave, I wanna make sure she's not hungry, that she's not lacking anything, that she's not thirsty. As a brand new believer, it is imperative that we read scripture and then one of my favorites is Ephesians 1.18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order so that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of your glorious inheritance, the riches of your glorious inheritance. I'm speaking to her personally. I'm making the scripture personal. Eddie has a, an inheritance waiting for her, an incorruptible inheritance that no demon, no angel, no one can touch. It has been protected. It has been waiting. God has had it waiting for her there. So I'm speaking these scriptures to her personally. I'm putting her name in. It is important that you put the person's name in that scripture so they receive it, that this is a personal promise to them from the Lord. And then there, this is the rest of the scripture. This is in 2 Corinthians 4, 17. For our light and more momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs anything we can go through on this earth. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is seen or unseen is eternal. This is temporary. I'm not focusing on what I see. If I come into this room and see this, I'm going to come in discouragement. I'm going to come in despair. The devil's going to take me out with grief or sorrow. And while those things are okay for a minute, now we have to get in our position of authority with praise, with joy, with the hope of the, the eternal life that we have in Christ. This is how we pray. This is how my spirit man witnesses to her spirit man. My spirit man is going to be able to feed and nourish her. Her spirit man is going to be able to receive the spirits that are in here, whether good spirits or the spirit of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. So then in Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold unwaveringly to the hope we profess because he who promised is faithful. So then I look at my dear friend and I say, the Lord loves you. He who has promised is faithful. He has promised that he has set a place for you, that no one can touch it, that it belongs to you, that this is your eternal inheritance, that there is a home and a mansion waiting with your name on it. And I start speaking this, so I'll speak a scripture and then I add to it. As long as it's in the context of scripture, I add to it and I put her name in it. And you can tell my, you can see my attitude and you can see my heart. So even though these breathing machines are on and even though there's IVs and even though there's tubes and even though there's a spirit of death here, it should not, um, we should be unwavering in our own hope and in our own faith of Jesus Christ because I'm not looking with my natural eyes. I don't hear the machines. I don't look at the tubes. I don't see the IVs. I don't see things that are stuck in her, needles and all this other stuff. I see her the way God sees her. 
I see her in her spirit, that she is going to spend an eternity with Jesus Christ, that she's going to have a new body, that she's going to be transformed in an instant, that she's going to be walking on streets of gold, that she's going to be with her creator and her father, that she is not an orphan and a widow. In this life, she was an orphan and a widow. In her kingdom, in the kingdom of God, she is no longer an orphan. She is no longer a widow. She is in a, in a kingdom where she lacks nothing. She's in the fullness of Jesus Christ. And then after we, we do that, then we want to comfort her. We want to continue to comfort her. Hope is what comforts her. Getting rid of fear is what comforts her. So now I have scripture pulled up on comfort. The Lord your God is in your midst, the mighty one who will save you. That means salvation, including other parts of salvation. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with your love. He will rejoice over you with singing. It says he's going to quiet you with his love. So as she's agitated and she's going through a lot and there's warfare, he said he's going to quiet all these demonic powers. He's going to quiet all of these things with his love towards her. So you are constantly reassuring her that she is loved by an almighty God, that she is forgiven by an almighty God, that God has not forsaken her or, or has not loved her or has not cared for her, that he is ushering her in. He is calling her in into her permanent home. She has a permanent home waiting for her. This earth is not our home. We are so, sojourners. We are foreigners. We are visitors. This is not our home. She's going to her actual home. And there's joy in that. And then Revelations 21, 4 says, And God is going to wipe away every tear from her eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed. The former things have passed. And now we go to John 11, 25, 26. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anybody who believes in me, anyone, anyone, it doesn't matter when you become born again, even if it's on your deathbed, any single person, anyone, because God doesn't want a single one of us to perish spiritually or to not have the blessed hope of eternal life. So he gives this promise to anyone at any time, in any place. It doesn't matter where people are, what they're going through that anyone who believes in me shall live forever, even after they die, that they shall live forever. Anybody, everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Look at that blessed hope of that promise. Everybody who believes in me, there is no death. There is no death. We don't suffer death. Death is not real. Death is something made up by the demonic realm to put us in fear. There is no death. The last breath that my friend takes here, she's going to be in the presence of an almighty God. She goes from this last breath to the, her breath of the breath of life and the breath of hope and the breath of almighty God in the name of Jesus. And now she can have a peace that surpasses all understanding. John 14, 27 says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give you. So do not be troubled or afraid. She has an everlasting peace because she has the peace that is found in the hope and her salvation and the eternity of being ushered in to a permanent kingdom, a kingdom that will never perish, a kingdom that is incorruptible. 1 Corinthians 15, 50, 50 through 57 says, What I am saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not die, but we will be transformed. And it will happen in a minute, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into the bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be must be, not might be, must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, the scripture will be fulfilled. Here's the scripture being fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thank gosh, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Job says, for as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives. He's redeeming her. He's redeeming her body. And he will stand upon the earth at last. And after our bodies have decayed, we will see God after our bodies. That is the hope we have. When these bodies decay, 
when these bodies decay, we're going to see God. We get to see God, the living God. Yes, I will see him with my own eyes. I am overwhelmed at the thought. This is what Job said in Job 19, verses 25 through 27. Lastly, Luke 23, 43, and he said to her, Truly I say today, truly I say to you, Eddie, that today you will be with me in paradise. Today, the doctor said it's going to be today. They said, in fact, in a few hours. The only reason I'm here is to give my sister and my friend and someone I love hope. Hope of her future, her real future, that there is no death, that she's going to be ushered in today. And I prayed, um, Holy Spirit, uh, through Father God, send her escort angels in. Send her angels. All of heaven is getting ready to rejoice as this precious soul and this beautiful woman enters into the presence of God. This is a celebration for heaven. All heaven is rejoicing. They are rejoicing because they know what she's going through. And they don't want to see her going through this today. There's a celebration. They are preparing a celebration. Just like preparing a birthday party or a wedding celebration. There is a celebration in heaven. And God knows the exact minute. The exact minute she's going to depart from this world to be ushered into the presence of an almighty and glorious kingdom. And he's the only one that knows. So they are getting the celebrations ready. In the natural, it would be like getting the balloons ready and the flowers ready and the food and calling in the caterer. And everybody's anticipating this great celebration that's about to take place in heaven. So this is what's going on with Eddie and our friend. And this is how we rejoice in this. This is how Father God wants you to rejoice. He wants us to know that even though we see things like this, this is not where our rejoicing is. Our rejoicing is in the everlasting hope that in a few hours, in a few minutes, whenever Father God decides according to his will, that she is going to be ushered in to a kingdom, to an eternal kingdom in the name of Jesus. And this is the blessed hope to which we are called as his saints, that this is what we have awaiting. So now you can see the joy that I'm ushering in into this room full of death and fear and agitation and all of these other spirits. And this is how you get those spirits out. It's not just binding them, but it's overtaking them. It's saying, hey, you're in my atmosphere and I want an atmosphere of hope and comfort and joy. So I just command all these spirits out because the ruling spirit is the spirit of the person who is in this room with her right now. And it is by our faith and it is our fervent prayer, and it is our fervent hope, that it is the blessed hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And, and when we're uh, uh, saying these scriptures in this room, all of hell bows down to the scriptures. Hell flees, the devil flees. This is what's happening, the devil is fleeing, these spirits are fleeing. And now she can breathe comfortably as she's waiting for her escorts. So this is an example of what we're supposed to do and what we're commanded to do in a situation like this. And the Lord is going to give you scriptures for you to read and for you to recite and for you to declare. And we're going to, you're going to use the person's name and you're going to speak personally over her. And, and this is what we're supposed to do as believers. So we never have fear coming into a situation. We never have discouragement. We never have despair. We come with unspeakable joy for this incorruptible, eternal hope that we have in Christ Jesus who loves us so much that he's prepared a place in advance for a beautiful, precious woman of God. So with that, I hope that has encouraged you because you can see, even though I'm, I cried a little bit when I walked in, because you're in the natural. So it's okay. God understands we are in the natural. We see a place like this and we hear the machines and we see what's going on. So for a minute, our soul comes into the natural. But God always says that we worship him in spirit and in truth. I just spoke the truth in this video. Now I'm worshiping Father in spirit. And she gets to worship God in spirit and in truth when these scriptures are spoken over her. And they're spoken over her in faith and in the joy of the Lord. So just remember that death has no sting. Death has been conquered. Death has been defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. Alrighty, everybody, we will see you soon. And we're going to see this sister in Christ in heaven. 
and you're going to know who she is. We'll probably even know who she is. Isn't that incredible? And we're going to remember this day in Jesus' name. Amen.